Hello and welcome to Songs for the Struggling Artist, the blogcast. This is episode 223. My name is Emily Rainbow Davis and today's blogcast is inspired by another podcast. I listened to the Boonga Boonga podcast. It's a Wondery podcast. There's a lot of ads in it, I gotta say. Woo, Wondery knows how to throw a lot of ads in a podcast, but I kept listening because it was interesting. It's a podcast about Silvio Berlusconi, and uh, I will mention the thing that caught my ear in the first episode, uh, but I just, before, before I read the blog, I thought I would give you some more info on the Boonga Boonga podcast. Uh... I, yeah, I, turns out that I did not realize, I think he was elected the year I was in Italy, the first time he's been elected many times. Um, and I missed it entirely. I was clearly not paying attention to politics like at all. I only noticed when there was a strike because I couldn't get where I was going or whatever, but I, 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 I have no memory I mean, maybe we talked about it, but wow, if we did, it is gone out of my brain. So anyway, it was interesting to sort of just like follow the trajectory as it relates to my own timeline, because isn't it nice to just relate all of the things in the world back to one's own self? Yeah. So uh, let me read it to you. Uh, You can hear where my mind went after I learned a little something on the Boonga Boonga podcast. Uh, And then I'll tell you some other things on the other side of this. So here we go. This is called Frustrated Artists and Tyrants. From listening to the Boonga Boonga podcast, I learned that Silvio Berlusconi started as a singer. He was reasonably successful and having a great time when, apparently, his dad shamed him asking him if he really was going to be a singer for the rest of his life. So, Silvio Berlusconi quit singing, even though he loved it, and became a shady-ass real estate developer instead. This led him to becoming a shady-ass media mogul and then the shady-ass prime minister of Italy. Did that go well for Italy? No, no, it did not. Would Italy have been better off if Berlusconi had just continued to do what he loved and just kept singing? I think so. I blame Berlusconi's dad for the problems of Italy. I also blame the world that denigrates the arts and deems them not enough. This makes me think about Hitler, of course. Hitler wanted to be a painter. He was rejected by the Academy of Fine Arts of Vienna, where he'd moved to pursue his dreams. He had a go of selling his work and found a few people to buy it. He was fucking serious about painting. Was he any good? No. But some people liked his stuff. They even paid for it. So, hey, that's something. But his failures in art led him to politics, and the world ended up with a disaster. Do I blame the Academy of Fine Arts? No. Nope. No one wants to go to school with Hitler. And he was bad, so of course they had to reject him. But someone, somewhere, might have encouraged him. I don't know who, but somebody could have kept that man painting and it would have saved millions of lives. The stories of frustrated artists going on to do terrible things are many, and there are many frustrated artists who ruined the lives around them when they took their own. What I'm trying to say here is that I think we need to take frustrated artists seriously. Think of all the tyrants we could have avoided if we just managed to be supportive of artists, or even just gave them some time, space, and resources to do their thing. I mean, good lord, just give artists the space to be artists, and the ones who would have turned out to be tyrants can just happily paint in their basements or sing in the clubs. But 
golly gee whiz, what if they're no good? What if they're a terrible singer or a lousy painter? To that, I say, wouldn't you rather have a gallery full of shitty paintings than the fucking Holocaust? Live with the shitty art for crying out loud. Embracing art and artists is a great thing to do just because art is great. But it also could be seen as a preventative measure. Prevent a tyrant, support an artist, even a shitty one. I swear everyone is so concerned with whether things are good or bad when really bad art is entirely tolerable in a way that, say, genocide is not. And I say that as someone who, when I'm watching something terrible, acts as though I'm being quite melodramatically tortured. I'm not saying that all frustrated artists are genocidal maniacs. If so, watch out for me. But an awful lot of genocidal maniacs really wanted to be artists. They would have rather been singers and painters or authors or actors or whatever. I think a culture that encouraged these things would see a lot fewer genocidal maniacs. Support an artist. Prevent a possible global catastrophe. Buy that weirdo's ugly paintings. You don't have to hang them up. Go to that terrible play. Listen to that awful album. Do it for the world. I feel like sometimes when people talk about supporting the arts, they really want to make sure that they only support the really good stuff. Organizations have extensive applications to make sure they get work of which they approve. They require references or degrees or resumes to try and ensure quality. If you propose running a lottery, they worry about how they will weed out the bad stuff. But true support would mean supporting all of it. The wonderful, the good, the mediocre, and the terrible. It's like trying to save a forest just by saving a couple of the tallest trees. The forest thrives because of all the trees, even the fallen, rotting ones. And to support a forest would mean supporting the widest variety of forest life. The same is absolutely true of the arts. The more supported the entire ecosystem is, the more good art we get out of it. And if just having a robust arts culture isn't enough of a reason for you, just think of investment in the arts as tyrant insurance. Support all the arts, even the bad, and maybe you'll save us from the ravings of the next frustrated artists. Again, I'm not saying artists are uniquely poised to be tyrants. Surely someone who had potent dreams in another field that were thwarted and discouraged would be equally likely to turn sour. Anyone with their dreams dashed upon a rock might be likely to turn bad, but Artists have their dreams dashed more often than most, and there are few places in the world where an artist's ambitions might be realized to their full potential. I think a world that encouraged its artists, whether they be good, bad, mediocre, or genius, would be a much more interesting world. And if my theory is correct, it might also have a lot fewer tyrants in it. So I don't know if the podcast app you're listening in actually shows you the images that I hook to the episodes. Some apps show those images and some do not. Um, Sometimes it'll just show the like show image, I think, depending on the app. I know I'm, I'm on like three or four different podcast apps and they all do totally different things. But I mention it just because the, uh, the photo that I found for this post is a photo of a young Berlusconi singing, and there. I just recommend you check it out if you're if you're not seeing it in your app. Uh, he he looks very happy, young guy. If only we'd let him sing. <laughs> I mean, if you if you want to know why it's it would have been good to just let this man sing, uh, just go ahead and listen to that podcast about all of the awful things he got up to. Just, just awful. Just so many awful things. And uh, a lot of them will sound kind of uh, similar to some awfulness that uh, we're hearing a lot about in, in this country. There's no similarities whatsoever 
not the real estate developer turned politician with corrupt ties all over the anyway there's you know there's that's not related <sighs> yeah so um it's october here uh, everywhere well it's it's not just october here i think does everywhere in the world have the same calendar now? Have we have we actually all settled on the same calendar? Is there a place in the world that where it is not October? Man, if somebody knows the answer to that, I would like to know. I, I'm pretty sure we're all on the same calendar. I know calendar issues back in the old days were were you know everybody was kind of on different times, but now I'm I'm pretty sure we're all hooked into the same situation. I guess. Yeah, there's probably like places that are removed from, you know, the rest of the cultures in the world entirely. So maybe they're on their own calendar. I don't know. I now, now I have questions. Uh, but if you if you know the answer, please tell me. Um, yeah. So, uh, uh, so, 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 and uh, today's song is from my old days uh, back in the band when I had a band Bright Red Boots um, I was trying to figure out what song to put here I like listened to a bunch of stuff and I was like maybe I could try this Judas Priest song I don't know I was really I could not I was just struggling and then one of you my lovely listeners suggested this uh, song from my from my uh, band days, um, because it's a song about, uh, I mean, you'll hear, you'll hear why it relates, but you know, that sense of, of being wasted in some job that you don't belong in when you're really, truly an artist instead. Um, yeah. So, uh, you'll, you'll hear that in a moment. It will be the recording that we made in 2001, was it 2001? Yes, it was 2001. Um, uh, I believe in the spring, I think it was May or something like that. Um, yeah, we recorded live in the studio. So we did it, I think we recorded each song like once or twice, at least twice. I think every song we recorded at least twice. And then, uh, and that was that. But we rehearsed like maniacs to be able to do that because it was the only way we could afford, a, you know, a day of a, of a studio. That's how we did it back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Like now we just be like, all right, let's record wherever we are. Just hook up the computer and the thing and pachung pachang. But then it was like a big deal to like go get a studio and like get some recording done. Like otherwise we were recording on like our little cassette tapes and whatnot. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so, so you'll hear that in a moment. Um, in other news, uh, episode nine of The Dragoning is in the hands of donors now, and it will be up in the regular podcast feed on Wednesday. So look for that if you're anxiously awaiting episode nine. Or even, you don't have to be anxiously awaiting it. You could just be like, yeah, I'm ready to hear it. So there's we don't need any more extra anxiety these days. Oof. Uh, and episode 10, I hope we'll have for you soon thereafter. Um, we're getting uh, actors' recordings uh, sort of slowly but surely, and um, we will deliver the, the, the episode shortly after that, and that'll be the finale of The Dragoning. So if you are, were waiting to start listening to The Dragoning until it was almost done, now is the moment. Because by the time you get to episode nine, and there will be an episode 10, I'm pretty sure, if you're just starting from the beginning, unless you're just like listening to it, you know, straight through like a binge listen. I don't know. Anyway, it's coming is what I'm saying. Uh, thank you for listening to the blogcast. And um, yeah, if you'd like to support it, please tell someone about it, recommend it. Like, review, subscribe in various podcast apps, and you can support it with uh, your your monies on patreon.com slash Emily R. Davis, uh, PayPal, Kofi, all those links are in the show notes if you want to uh, help 
that is always much appreciated. The struggling in struggling artist in this case is uh, not a metaphor. <laughs> Wee! Uh, so thank you. Uh, and and uh, meanwhile, here from 2001, you will hear Waste, it is called, uh, featuring Vince Ritchie on guitar, Alexander Devon on percussion, George Hennick on tuba, yours truly on vocals. And I don't think I'm playing guitar on this song. I just listened to it again. And uh, normally I played guitar on this song, but I think we decided to just have me focus on vocals on this one because it was kind of complicated. It, the chords aren't complicated, but it, it like the just there's quite a few rhythm shifts as you'll hear, and uh, it was kind of vocally demanding. And uh, I think I'm not playing. I don't hear myself playing, so I think I'm not. I played it live, like we'd always play it, and I'd usually drop out uh, at certain key points. But I think we decided for consistency's sake to just have Vince on guitar the whole time. If I'm missing, I might the I may chime in there a little bit. A couple of times, but I don't think I'm playing. I wonder if I have that written down somewhere. It's funny how you forget things. <laughs> Woo! Anyway, I wrote this thing. I don't even remember what the chords are. <laughs> I could find them. I know I have them written down somewhere. Uh, hopefully not in my book of chords and whatnot that was stolen when I moved to California years ago. Hopefully written down in a computer type place. Fingers crossed. If I ever wanted to play this solo, um, we could do like an acoustic Emily does Bright Red Boots Unplugged. Uh, but yeah, I wrote this thing back when I was temping. You might even be able to tell. You'd be like, "What? gee, what were you doing? Oh yeah, you were temping? <laughs> At a, like a chemical, a pharmaceutical company, some kind of something. Anyway, yeah. So thank you again to my listener who suggested this song. And uh, for those of you who haven't heard it before, enjoy Waste from Bright Red Boots album, the eponymous album, Bright Red Boots. got me down again I spend all day in that place and then I spend it there again and I don't know another way to make my pay there's got to be a better way to spend my day I can't believe this is my life I can't believe this is how I spend my time I don't know how you do this your whole life it's a way Mine. I'm going crazy, my rope is at an end They're trying to break me while I'm trying to bend And I don't know how to keep my sanity In a world that will not see humanity I can't believe this is my life to live.
Am I a dreamer? Am I chasing a dove? To want to spend my time doing things that I love and I don't know what it is I'm looking for All I can say is that it's not behind this office door I can't believe this is my life I can't believe this is how I spend my time I don't know how you do this your whole life It's a waste of mine It's a waste of mine It's a waste, a waste, a waste